has presented on diversity and historical topics such as in-depth history of Toronto's Chinatown at the North Toronto Historical Society and spoken at CCNC events such as Ripple Effect 2010. I've had the chance to uh, work with Harvey in a few projects and uh, I'm really uh, happy that we have a person who gets statistics as well as the sociological impact at the same time at City of Toronto, so we see a great ally in you. Thank you very much for coming and please join me in welcoming Harvey to the podium. Thanks, Nathan. Um, it's always very hard to follow somebody like Fiona, who, you know, from the Ombudsman's office, dealing with all the important issues, and now you're hearing a statistician talk, right? Uh, but Fiona mentioned a comment in there, it's that government shapes laws. And the only way that governments, I think, that can help shape laws is with good information, and that's the job that I do. Uh, I provide a, a, a breadth of information, statistics, numbers, mapping, maps, uh, to community agencies and groups, uh, and they come asking the city for how many people live here, work here, that's my job. Now I'm going to uh, just go through a very quick uh, history lesson, just to set the context for this month's events, uh, and uh, also give you a little bit of idea in terms of some of the resources that the city can offer you in terms of demographic uh, resources. So, um, people have probably heard the word Toronto, actually, here's a history lesson. It actually comes from a, a Mohawk phrase, which is I'd probably pronounce it wrong, Toronto, which was actually modified later by the French and English uh, to ultimately mean the meeting place. And what meeting place this is. I mean, looking even here amongst the different backgrounds of, of, of ethnic cultures, even within this own room, and uh, I had the pleasure of doing jury duty the other day, and you can see the breadth of diversity in the city, and that's what I love. So definitely a meeting place of different cultures in the city. That is truly the word of the meeting, meeting place, and, and it's, a, it's actually a pleasure to, to, to work for the city of Toronto that embraces such policy. Next slide, please. So I'm not going to go through all these, but Toronto is, is basically diversity layered upon diversity. We have all sorts of, not only different cultures, different backgrounds, people of different economic circumstance, which provides challenges, of course. Um, but you can see some of the vast uh, uh, statistics here. 172 different countries of origin. Um, we've probably even got 200 plus languages spoken, when you include all the various dialects, right? Uh, next slide, please. These are just some stats just to show you the breadth of, of ethnic uh, origins. Chinese, you can see at the top, followed uh, further on down by the various community groups. And just to give you a sense, in terms of new immigrants coming to Toronto, only over 70% of all new immigrants that come to Canada uh, now settle in the Toronto area. Next slide. This graph shows the uh, immigrants uh, to Toronto by countries of origin. So you heard the councillor mention that Toronto receives a lot of people from South Asia and Asia. He's correct. Used to be European countries, it's now, uh, as in the 70s and 80s, flipped the other way around, where most of the new immigrants are now coming from Asia and South Asia. Next slide, please. Now, we'll talk a little bit about our stories, and this is where I'm going to take my cap off as a, uh, a city civil servant and just put one on as a fourth generation Canadian, uh, Chinese Canadian. Next slide. We're actually on the site, for those of you that don't know, of the original Toronto's Chinatown. You can see right over here, there's the city hall right here right there, and we're sitting really smack dab on what was once the original Chinatown. Next slide. Here's a picture up at the top, taken from the Canada Life Building, that shows probably back in the, the 40s or 50s, um, the area that was once Chinatown, and, and called the Ward, actually, and uh, one of the poorest areas in Canada, and down below, what, of course, what it looks like now. Next slide. Just a couple of pictures of the old Toronto Chinatown that is no longer here. Why is it important to remember these things? Because there's an old saying that if you uh, want to know where you're going, you need to know where you've been. Right? Always important to uh, uh, celebrate our past. Next slide. Just examples of some of the head tap. That's my, uh, great, that's my grandfather's head tap for him. He was about nine when he came over on the bottom of a Japanese freighter at the turn of the century. So there's been a lot of struggle in this nation, and all of us can contribute to that struggle in building a stronger nation. Next slide. Some pictures uh, from my family album. That's my grandfather, that's my father in law who served with the Canadian Forces in the Pacific in World War II. Next slide. Just some things that the city can provide you as resources, and I'll wrap it up here. Next slide. There's a couple of things that you can get online. You can learn about the demographics of your community by going on to our, our demographic portal. Next slide. You can look at the neighborhood of war profiles to look at the uh, makeup of the communities uh, in your neighborhood. Next slide, please. There's a social atlas that's at your disposal. Next slide. 
And we now just launched a new application called Wellbeing Toronto. That's an online mapping tool that allows you to map uh, information on ethnic communities, uh, on environmental, transportation, all these things. It's all part of our desire at the City of Toronto to provide more data to you within the context of, of, uh, of uh, better analysis tools that allow you uh, quick access to this information. Next slide. And I'm just going to end there. Thank you very much for allowing the opportunity for me to speak to you, and I very much look forward to the dialogue that we're going to have after this. Thank you.